Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this feast day of Pentecost. Special welcome to any who might be among us as visitors or guests this morning, and we welcome those who are joining us via technology as well. We do have some uh, guests who cycled in. I see Alan K. Castle just walked in there in the back here. Um, Al's retired pastor, and I didn't catch where you folks are from. We are from. Uh Great. Wonderful. Well, I yeah. I got a call. I got a call from them the other day that said, "Well, we're in Drummond. We'll be there tomorrow." And I thought, Drummond, Helena on a bike. <laughs> Well, we're very impressed, so welcome. They are staying with us for a couple of days as they go around, and I hope you will greet them um, as we join for refreshments in the great room after worship. I'm Pastor Trina Johnston. I am assisted this morning by Lisa Williams-Matthew, Dennis Trotter, the quartet, the band, Linda, a whole host of folks up here. Um, it is fun to see so much red out there this morning. I see you got the memo uh, as we mark the fiery and unpredictable coming of the Holy Spirit upon the early church and also celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit that each one of us receives. Pentecost is the longest season of the year. It starts today and it's going to go all the way to the last Sunday in November. <laughs> so it is a long, long season. It's also called ordinary time, not because it's dull or uh, dreary, but because we use ordinals, which is a kind of a fancy word for numbers, to count through it. First Sunday in Pentecost, second Sunday in Pentecost, third Sunday in Pentecost. Today is red, as you can see beautiful up here with our all of our red things. Uh, think fire, energy, um, spontaneity, a hot red convertible blazing down the road. <laughs> but the rest of the season of Pentecost is green. Green, the color of growth, development, maturation, maturity. And that is kind of our task during the season of Pentecost to grow in faith, to grow in service during this long season. As we enter into a new season of the church year, we often change a few things in our liturgy, and Jason has chosen two lovely pieces for the season of Pentecost, one of which he's gonna share with us now, uh, and this will gather us and lead us into the communion liturgy for the next several months. So take it away, Jason. I forgot I was supposed to do this this morning. Ah. <laughs> well, you follow instructions well. <laughs> so as we're sharing the piece, you will hear this piece of music. There is peace at the table of the Lord. There is peace at the table of the Lord. Help. There is help. invite you to sing that when that's time. Thanks, Jason, and the words will be up there when we get to that point. We are fortunate to have a long weekend 
this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and we have it due to the sacrifices that others have made on our behalf, those who've served in the armed forces. So as we kick off the summer, we remember this and we thank those among us who serve today. I know we have many who are currently serving and many who have in the past. Will you please stand for just a moment so that we can honor what you have given to us? Thank you. This Friday and Saturday are the annual Montana Synod Assembly. It's being held in Great Falls this year. Our delegates are Kevin Matthews, our council president, and Ingrid Childress, our first vice president. Uh, keep the work of the Synod in your prayers this week as they meet for this business meeting. Next Sunday, we're having a hymn sing. At the back, there is a small table with pieces of paper on it. If you'd like to request a hymn, please do so. Uh, if it's not in our hymnal, give us as much information about it as you possibly can. We will sing as many as we can next week, and what we don't sing, we'll sing later in the summer, so please take part in that. And then one note from our Vacation Bible School preppers, we have enough jars for our project. <laughs> we, we have twice as many jars as we need. <laughs> so thank you, as always, you are very generous. <laughs> Everyone gets to do two crafts that day, I guess. <laughs> so thank you for the ways that you continue to support Vacation Bible School starts two weeks from tomorrow. And now let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship as we join together in confessing our sin and hearing words of forgiveness. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, trusting in God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. We take a moment for silent reflection. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, take heart, for we are justified by faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, and so have peace with God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. Amen. We turn now to our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all nations, on this day we celebrate how you open the tongues and hearts of your faithful people of old as you sent your Holy Spirit. Direct us by that same Holy Spirit in this place and time. Give us the insight and wisdom that only comes from listening to your spirit and the courage to do things that would strengthen and build your kingdom and spread the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. kid time. Any children who would like to join Mrs. Liz for a time of learning and fun may join her now. This is geared towards children in grade two and under, but all are welcome. We now turn to our readings for the day. In today's first lesson, we hear Paul helping the Corinthian congregation understand that the Holy Spirit gives each of us gifts to be used to build up the kingdom of God. We see this in our own congregation as we each bring a variety of gifts, services, and activities. And without the gifts you bring, our community be, would be less than it could be. Paul also reminds us the people and all the gifts that were given for the common good to create unity among our diversity. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the 12th chapter. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. 
and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of gifts, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Word of God, Word of Life. God. Drunk at nine o'clock in the morning? That's what bystanders thought when witnessing the Holy Spirit outpouring on, onto the early church. How else to explain all the gibberish that they heard? But it wasn't just unintelligible sounds coming from the mouths of the dis surprised disciples. It was the Holy Spirit making sure that all present had equal access to the good news that in Jesus, God had done a new thing and was reaching out to all people with forgiveness. On this feast day of Pentecost, we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, both to the early church and to us. Through this gift, we are promised prophecy, visions, and dreams. To what is the Holy Spirit directing our attention today? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Now, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall see visions, and your young men shall dream dreams. Even among my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We Lutherans are sometimes referred to as second article Christians. 
second article Christians. What that means is that in the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, there are three sections, three articles, one on God the Father, one on God the Son, one on God the Holy Spirit. We tend to focus in our storytelling, in our preaching, in our theology, on the second section, the one about Jesus. And why not? Hmm. After all, it's the life, death, and resurrection of God come to us in Jesus that is the really good part of the story for us. <laughs> it's the part focused on us. It's the you're forgiven part. It's the saving part. It's the good news for Trina part. But we don't want to focus on that part of the story to the exclusion of the rest of the story. And the rest of the story is the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the ongoing presence and work of that Holy Spirit in our midst. And that's the rub. What exactly is the ongoing presence and work of the Holy Spirit in our midst? Well, we claim that the Holy Spirit is the one who gives comfort and encourages, who provides us with courage, who steers us towards wisdom and understanding, who gives us peace in times of trouble. I personally think of the Holy Spirit as the stirrer of the pot. That's been my experience with the Spirit. Just when I get all settled, it gives the pot a good stir or two to remind me to not settle in. There is a movie that I loved when it came out about 20 years ago, a real chick flick, called Strictly Ballroom. Indulge me briefly as I share part of that story because it is a true Pentecost movie. It's set in the culture of competitive ballroom dance, real small subset of the population, <laughs> a world in which people work for years to master the waltz or rumba or foxtrot. And the goal of competitive dance is to do the steps in precisely the right way better than anyone else. And in this film, the ultimate goal is to win the coveted Pan Pacific Cup, the prize of prizes. The main character is a young man named Scott. And Scott's mom tried unsuccessfully to win the Pan Pacific as a young woman. So she's been living out her dreams through her son. Since he was six, he's been groomed to win the coveted Pan Pacific that she never was able to get. Scott is a brilliant dancer, but over the years he's become bored. Bored with the stiff routine of it, bored with the mechanical precision, Scott longs for more. He loves the old dances, but he wants to put more of himself into the dancing. Maybe add a few new steps, something that is forbidden in the highly regulated world of competitive ballroom dance. Three weeks before the big contest, Scott's dancing partner suddenly quits, and in steps Fran. Rather new to dancing, a bit clumsy, nothing like the flashy dance pros on the competitive circuit. But there's something about her that Scott is drawn to. So they begin to practice feverishly in the short amount of time they have left before the competition. One evening, Fran takes Scott home to meet her family, a boisterous group of passionate Spaniards, new immigrants trying to scrape by and make a new life. It's a scene full of old women with no makeup, hair in a bun, wearing kind of shapeless black peasant dresses, and exhausted, hardworking day laborers with their sleeves all rolled up, drinking red wine in the backyard at night. When they discover that Scott is a dancer, they say, Dance with Fran, dance a dance that we know. Out comes the guitar, and the couple offers the group the absolutely perfect steps 
of what is supposed to be a fiery and passionate Spanish dance. And as they dance so very precisely, the old women in the black peasant dresses and the men drinking red wine exchange amused glances, and then they start to laugh, quietly at first, but then uncontrollably. Why are you laughing? Scott demands angrily. Without a word, Fran's father gets up from his chair and dances the same dance with her grandmother. You can tell it's mostly the same dance, but it's not really the same dance because it's got something more. Scott knows all the right steps, has perfect timing, is graceful, but there's no passion, no spirit in his dancing. But as you watch this aging immigrant laborer dance, you immediately see the difference. The difference between perfect dancing without spirit and dancing with spirit imperfectly. Everyone sees it, especially Scott. Well, the film reaches its climax at, you guessed it, the Pan Pacific Cup Ballroom Dance Competition. As Scott and Fran begin to dance, they do exactly what everyone was afraid they would do. They dance one of the great old dances, but horror of horrors, they break the rules, they include new steps. The ballroom dance establishment watches in shock and outrage. The president of the organization finally does what he must, he pulls the plug. He literally pulls the plug on the music <laughs> that is causing this shocking departure from the way they have always done it. But he's too late. Everyone see it, and they are transfixed by dancing so passionate, dancing so full of spirit. And then the audience begins to clap in rhythm. So that Scott and Fran can finish their dance which they do, and ballroom dance is forever changed. <laughs> what a great way to think about the church and the way that the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us and stirs the pot. Just like in ballroom dance, over time, congregations develop a set of steps that we call the way we do things. Movements that become familiar and beloved parts of our life together. We work tirelessly to perfect all the steps, getting better and better each year. We are very good at the way we do things. But the danger is this. If we aren't careful, the way we do things becomes our goal rather than looking for what God would have us do. Today is the day of Pentecost, the day when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the surprising transformation that the Spirit brings. We see that in that lesson from Acts where we find Jesus' followers gathered together, waiting and then out of nowhere, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and, and bam, unbelievable things begin to happen. This motley crew of Galilean fishermen and tax collectors and women gets up and dances out into the world with the story of the living God. The world watches, stunned, perplexed. Some try to pull the plug on it saying that the dance is nothing but an embarrassing, drunken stumbling about at 9 o'clock in the morning. But others see something else, see something fresh and, and spirit-filled, and they begin to clap along. And now, some 2,000 years later, that first group of 120 timid believers who were surprised by the Holy Spirit has grown to over Two and a half billion believers. 
And yet our challenge is to continue to be open to the surprising ways that the Spirit may come, may transform, may send us out dancing. We continue to be in a time of transformation here at Our Redeemers with more yet to come, I would imagine. And it can be a time when people try to hold on to what has been. Or we can join the dance of the Holy Spirit and see what it has in mind for us. We might as well embrace it because the Spirit's going to stir the pot no matter what we do, whether we like it or not. And in the end, it's not really about us, is it? It's about being part of enacting God's love for the world as shown in Jesus. Same goal as always, proclaiming the good news of Jesus in ways that people can hear, like those new tongues the disciples received at Pentecost. But how do we do that today? How do we do that today? Are there new methods of teaching the old stories? Are there new ways to welcome those who've been pushed to the outside? What do our youth need? Our families, our matriarchs and patriarchs. I don't know myself. But I do know that we are charged with being attentive to the ongoing presence and work of the Holy Spirit in our midst. And on that first Pentecost, the whole group of believers were Change, changed into dancing fools willing to rush into the streets and spread the story with all the passion that they could muster. Willing to be the butt of jokes. Willing to speak in new languages. Willing to go in new directions in order to tell others of the living God. So on this day of Pentecost, do we dare pray one more time Come, Holy Spirit. Are we willing to have the Spirit coach us on dancing the old dance in new ways? Because I prophesy that the Lord has big plans for us, and the Holy Spirit is on the scene to make certain they come to fruition. Amen.
please be seated. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of wisdom, we pray for the leaders, voting members, and others gathering for the assembly of the Montana-Wyoming Synod this week. May the Holy Spirit strengthen, guide, and inspire them as they reflect on the mission of the church, choose leaders, and encourage one another to proclaim the gospel and serve our neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of our future, we pray for young people celebrating their graduations from high school and college, and for the families and teachers who have equipped and encouraged them all along the way. Help them to remember these words in the book of Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We also remember to pray for students who struggle with school, that they might have people in their lives to encourage and support them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Inspiring God, fill us with your Holy Spirit as you did on the first Pentecost. Help us to discern the spiritual gifts we have been given as individuals and as communities of faith and just share them where they are the most needed in the church and the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, as we observe Memorial Day, we remember, honor, and give thanks to those in the armed forces who have given their lives for the sake of peace, justice, and freedom. We pray for those who serve in harm's way today, that they may be safe, and that their faith, courage, and commitment to the well-being of others will be strengthened and sustained. We also ask for healing for all veterans seeking care for mental and physical injuries received during active duty. Comfort all who mourn and suffer as the result of wars and usher in a world where war is no more. Lord, in your mercy. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to a new life in you, especially Verna Strand, Nelson Bach's father, Charles, and Kevin Matthews' stepfather, Cordell Johnson. Be with their families as they learn to navigate a life without them. Comfort them with assurances that their loved ones are in your eternal presence, where we will all be together again one day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. This is a time in worship when we give back to the one who has given us all things.
Let us remember why we give. We give because God first gave to us. We give to support God's work in the world. We give to remind ourselves to put our trust in God. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us sign that good sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. to the Lord our God. Hear right now also a part of the story that I know you know so well. How in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God come forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and be fed. I'll have those who are here be seated for just a moment. As I turn to you who are gathered from afar and say to you, take and eat. 
This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Those gathered here will come forward and you'll find that we will have two stations up here at the front. Uh, we have both bread and gluten-free wafers. The gluten-free wafers will be on a little table here in the center. Please indicate to your server what you would prefer. The wine is red, the grape juice is white, and there will be a little basket for you to put the empty glass into. If you'd like to come forward and not partake of the meal but still receive a blessing, come forward like this. That will be the signal to your server that you would like to be blessed. If you'd like us to bring communion out to you where you are seated, whichever of these stations is done first will come through the center here. Just gesture to them. They will bring you the meal where you are. As a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, this is an open table. All are welcome. This is Christ's table. Please come and be fed. We are coming now to your table. We are coming now to your table to receive your grace, to receive your love, to receive your grace, to receive your love. Oh, we are coming now. Oh, we are coming now. We are coming down to your table. We are coming down to your table to receive your grace, to receive your love, to receive your grace, to receive your love. Oh, we are coming down. Oh, we are coming down. We are coming.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and unto life eternal. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now out to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join together in our closing hymn. Oh, right. <clears throat>
and serve the Lord. How are you? I'm good. 